Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another product review and today I have something for you that I, to my own surprise, actually never have reviewed on this channel. It's a Caveco product and of course I have reviewed quite a number of Caveco products over the years, but there's one very popular one that I never had a look at and that is the Caveco Sport Brass or Caveco brass sport and that's the one that we're going to have a look at today in combination with this nice little leather pouch here before we dive into it uh thanks a lot to caveco who has sent me these things here to have a look at it came with a very nice let's write history together sticker with the iconic caveco German Shepherd or Deutscher Schäferhund. A very cool sticker. Um, came with a lovely vintage style postcard. This up here, if I'm not completely mistaken, must be Michael Gutballet, which is like the senior uh, boss or uh, the chief of Caveco. Uh, you also find the German Shepherd right here, Caveco Inc., the Caveco Sports Pens, of course, Heidelberg, Nürnberg, and so on. Very cool little card. And uh, you then also uh, see the little box here that the pen comes in saying Heidelberger Federhalter Fabrik, which means uh, fountain pen factory from Heidelberg, Koch Weber and Co. That's what it looks like celebrating the vintage and the rich heritage of Caveco. The little tin boxes here, I assume that it is tin. Um, very cool, you see Germany, Germany since 1883, which sort of like explains the design language right here. Very cool little boxes. Uh, I like them a lot to store smaller stationary miscellaneous such as, you know, ink cartridges, uh, uh, erasers, um, paper clips, and so on. Very, very cool. But uh, the star of the show right now, of course, is the Caveco Brass Sport Fountain Pen, which is a pocket fountain pen made from brass right here in this um in this material very very nice has the caveco three syllable logo finial right up top here in silver the cap as the whole pendant is made in brass of course the very iconic caveco sport design octagonal saying Caveco Brass Sport Germany. You have the barrel down here then with a little flare, which is uh, used to post the pen. You unscrew the pen with ah, not even a turn, very quick. And you, of course, can, you know, twist in both directions at the same time. That makes for a very fast uncapping. The pen is slightly small, of course, when used unposted but the cool thing is that you can use it for a few quick notes right when it is unposted get a stable of pile of stable of post-its right here quick note yeah no problem shopping list very bad handwriting right here, of course, because this is just like a few quick notes. But, you know, as you can see, unposted, no problem, you know, to dash out a few bullets right here and write a few lines. That works very well. And then once you post the pen, as you can see, you get the proper full-size fountain pen. We do a writing sample then in a bit that you can use, you know, to write all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's very, very cool. The pen is quite heavy as it's made from brass. I do like that because I do like 
some heft to it. It's very nice because this is a very warm material, this metal. If you play around it with your hand, it's like also a very nice fidget toy in a way. You know, you can like play around with it in your hand when you're sitting in a meeting or when you're thinking about a problem or something like that. I really like the warm feeling of that brass to it. It has like that slight brass smell as well, which I personally enjoy. Uh, maybe not everyone enjoys it. I do. The cool thing about brass, as you can see here right now also, is like that the material does develop patina, you know, from the oils and salt in your hands that will then react over time and also in the air with this metal. It does develop some patina, gives it this typical vintage style that brass materials, brass products do tend to develop, which is very nice. Of course, if you want it all nice and shiny, you could always use a polishing cloth and sort of like brass the patina off, uh, 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 polish the patina off uh, from the brass. Of course, it will come back over time and you can like remove the polishing again or like remove the patina again by polishing. I personally enjoy this patina. It's among other uh, things the reason why these brass fountain pens also are so popular because of the patina thinking only about the Y Studio fountain pen, which I think sort of like, you know, is like also very, very popular because of that brass. Um, nib wise, it has like this, like very tiny Caveco nibs on right here. Has the Caveco three syllable logo on there as well. F for fine, I got it in a fine. Right here, some scroll work, breather hole, plastic feet down here. Very cool feature about those Caveco feet is that they also say Caveco down here, which I personally also do enjoy a lot. Caveco had a bit of quality control issues with their nips at some point. I think this is like a thing of the past. I've reviewed quite a number of Caveco products uh, post that area, and I must say I have not had any nip bummers ever since and that's probably now like a year ago at least so very happy to say that these things all write very very nicely right out of the box opening up the pen in here you sort of like see what the brass looks like when it's not patinat because of course like you don't touch it in there and there's little air contact in here so very shiny and glossy. That's the state that you can get it into with some polishing. Takes standard international ink cartridges. Of course, you can also use the Caveco mini piston converter or squeeze converter. I do tend to use um, all of them, you know, just depending on my mood. In this case, this is just like a simple black ink cartridge. I don't even know what kind of ink it is. Uh, I find it's very convenient to be able to, when on the go, just have a couple of spare ink cartridges with you in order to use with a pen. Price-wise, the Caveco Brass Sport comes in at 75 euro, which I think is like a, is like a good price. Of course, if you compare it to the regular Caveco Sports, this year is now not a classic sport. I think it's the Skyline Sport because like it has silver, not gold accents. I modified it, by the way, with a gold colored um, steel nib just because I find it's very cool. Um, if you compare them price wise, that one here costs around 20 euros. So then, of course, the 75 euro is a quite substantial step up. But of course, it's also brass. It's a lot more sturdy. It's a lot more of a pen in your hand. And the Y Studio brass pen, while it's a full size pen, costs, I think, 140 euros. So if you, you know, if, if you keep that in mind, I think the 75 euros are really okay. You know, it's brass. Uh, it's, it's, it's not any material. It's not plastic. So of course, you pay for that as well. And that thing here is definitely going to last you for a lifetime. So in my book, that's cool. Um, one thing to point out, of course, if you're used to the sort of like Skyline or Classic Sport plastic fountain pens, these are a lot less heavy. Um, so if you like this pen and if you like enjoy the weight, then that one here might be too heavy for you. I don't know. Try it out. Up to you, of course. But like, you know, keep in mind that there's like a substantial weight difference. 
Uh, one more thing that I wanted to point out, <clears throat> it's a detail, but uh, to me, details are important. So I just thought I'll, I'll point it out and I'll mention it. I do like to use those pens with those clips just because I find it's like uh, very nice and uh, it's uh, just a nice additional design detail and I find it's very, very cool. It's not that you don't need them for a roll stop because the pen is octagonal, right? So like, I mean, like it will just lay on its flat side uh, so, so, so it won't roll off your table. But I just think it's a very cool and nice design element and I wanted to have one on the brass sport as well. But uh, one small thing that irritates me personally is that uh, when I slide it onto the pen and when I slide the clip far down enough so that it sticks, then these clamps somehow cover part of the writing here. So I can't read the full Germany right here anymore. Uh, it's not the bit and it also sort of comes into the sport here. I mean, I don't know. It's not a biggie, right? It's not a big deal, but like to me personally, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it just annoys me a little bit, uh, which is why uh, I just don't use a clip on that pen and uh, I'll use the clip on that pen. And right here, you know, it doesn't interfere with any of the writing here that, uh, you know, Keeps my OCD a lot more satisfied. Just wanted to point it out. Very cool is also like if you get this little um, leather pen pouch right here, which is very nice. I think it costs 15 euro, which is a pretty cool price for a little leather pen pouch. And this is actually sort of like a reminiscent of the 1920s design, of a 1920s design, because this little pen pouch is more or less in existing in that kind of design language since the 1920s. Has this like nice little gold colored chain right here with like a Caveco coin here saying original Caveco Sport and Caveco. Very cool. Another fidget toy. So if you're like a fidgety person, then uh, you're definitely fully covered with this package here. Very cool, you can ca carry two fountain pens with you. I'm a fountain pen user, so I like doing that. But of course, these uh, writing implements here are also available as a rollerball, ballpoint pen, I think, uh, as, uh, you know, what is it called, mechanical pencils. So of course, you could have like a pair of different writing implements with you. Very, very nice. Uh, I promised you these Caveco nibs have become great again. Uh, let's zoom in and do a quick writing sample with this very true to the size fine nib here. Very, very nice. Let's just write a few lines. There you have it. Um, here's a few lines with the Caveco Brass Sport Fountain Pen with a fine nib. Uh, it writes very, very smoothly, very, very nicely. There is like a tad of feedback to it that lets you know that you write with a pen on paper. It's not the glossy, smooth polishing. Uh, I do like that writing experience a lot. Uh, having said that this is a steel nib, there is some give to it, as you can see right here. So you can squeeze some line variation out of it. I would probably not write like that with this pen all the time. But like if this is something that you do enjoy doing every now and then, you can do that with that pen. Um, I never do it, <laughs> to be honest. I'll just write with it, you know, in uh, regular with a sort of like... A, you know, not a heavy hand, but not a light hand either. Just sort of like smack in the middle somewhere. Kind of pressure handwriting. That's that. With this review, I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight um, into what this pen is all about. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.